Shalom, this is the first of the Q&A videos that we will be uh, be making. Students send in questions, or adults send in questions, anyone can send in questions, and I'll try to answer them in these very short videos. The first question we have is, what exactly happened on the Iran vote that the Senate blocked the vote? And the answer is as follows. In order for a vote to go to a vote on the Senate, if a bill is going to be voted on, like in this case, the uh, approval or the rejection of the Iran deal vote was going on. The Senate has to take a vote as to, it's in essence not real, an official vote, but it has to have 40 senators, um, less than 40 senators have to take a vote that says that the vote should go through. If 40 senators don't want the vote to happen, they can continue discussion. That's called a filibuster where they keep talking about it over and over. There were 42 Democrats who decided not to allow what's called cloture, which is the vote to happen. And that's exactly what, the, uh, what happened. 42 senators decided to block the vote, and therefore for no vote happened. The Republicans tried to host the vote three times, and all three times uh, the Democrats, 42 Democrats, blocked the vote from happening. The next question has was from whether or not sanctions can be reimposed if Iran cheats. If Iran cheats, then yes, definitely sanctions can be reimposed. The question is whether they will be or not. Um, the deal definitely provides for sanctions to be reimposed by all six countries. America definitely would. It's big doubt whether or not China or Russia would follow through and actually reimpose the sanctions. There is one clause in the contract that anyone that signs a business deal with Iran, let's say IBM signs a business deal with Iran, and keeps that business deal going uh, until they find out that they've cheated on their nuclear deal, and then they've and then now sanctions have to be reimposed. There's a grandfather clause that actually says that IBM cannot, doesn't have to end their business dealings. That was one of the reasons why people didn't like the deal, that while sanctions can be reimposed, there's a grandfather clause that says that anyone that was involved in sanctions can't, uh, until that point, won't be penalized and they can keep doing business. That's a bad thing for the deal because as much as sanctions can be reimposed, anyone that does business can continue doing their business. Uh, last thing, just news from Israel, last two things, last thing from Israel is that there's been unfortunately a whole spate of stone throwing when we talk about stone throwing at cars Arabs throwing stones at Jewish cars we're not talking about little rocks we're actually talking about our massive boulders the size of basketballs that kill unfortunately the day before Rosh Hashanah Arab Rosh Hashanah there was a Jew that was killed by a stone throwing incident um, Israel is responding harshly and has changed its policy to where snipers are now allowed to shoot stone throwers and in the past it's only been alive not with live rounds but with rubber bullets and now they're taking a much more aggressive approach Approach. Our last question is to go through the different presidential candidates and their views on Israel. Can't do all, uh, I think we're up to 25 right now. Can't do all 25 in one sitting, but we'll go through in each video, we'll go through one person. Today we're going to do Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee is the former governor of Arkansas, ran for president in 2008, obviously lost, but not only lost, lost in the primaries, in the Republican primaries, and Mike Huckabee is incredibly pro-Israel. Um, he's a religious Christian and believes in Israel from a religious standpoint. He's already visited Israel once on this campaign as an as a interesting point as a fundraising effort. People gave him money to come to Israel. Uh, incredibly, incredibly pro-Israel. But and, and while he did win the the Iowa um, the Iowa contest in the first primary in 2008, um, since then it's just been downhill. He's made a lot of money since then as a Fox News commentator and incredibly right wing. But there's uh, almost a zero chance of Mike Huckabee winning the uh, presidency. But yeah, very pro-Israel, um, very pro-settlement, uh, very pro anything right wing Israel related. Okay. That's it for today's video. Since it is Friday, I wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom.